This is the At Games Arcade Legends Ultimate, specifically the version 1.2 model which was sent to us by the lovely folks over at Liberty Games for us to review. So, what exactly is it and what can it do? It's a home arcade cabinet which comes preloaded with 300 games and is equipped with two joysticks each with six action buttons, two spinners and a single trackball. On each side of the unit you also have two buttons which are designed for use with pinball games, so really this seems like a great all-purpose arcade cabinet that can play practically any classic arcade game using its intended control scheme. Before we get ahead of ourselves though, let me take you all the way back in time to when this thing was first delivered to talk you through the whole setting up process from the start. First off, the packaging here was great. Everything came in a single big box, the contents were all packaged extremely well, with plastic wrap around all of the main sections and padding to stop any movement in the box causing damage. The setup was also extremely simple thanks to the instructions being clear and straightforward and all of the different screws being nicely organised in this packaging. The only equipment you'll need is a standard Phillips head screwdriver and maybe a second person to help you lift to the top section of the arcade onto the base. But really, this thing can be built in a matter of 40 minutes or less and basically feels like you're putting together some flat packed furniture. Then all that's left to do is to plug this sucker in, turn it on, wait for a few boring updates, then you're ready to go. The build quality of the cabinet is really good. I was a little bit worried it might feel a bit like a budget option due to the fact that you actually need to put it together yourself, but this thing is sturdy. Not only is it approximately the same size as an actual arcade cabinet from the 80s, being 5 foot 6 tall and 2 foot 5 wide, but I've also been violently wiggling these joysticks and going crazy with this trackball and it really feels like you would intentionally need to be attempting to to break this in order to do any damage to it. The joysticks have this nice little clicking effect to them when you move them around which is just enough to give you some physical feedback but not enough so that it feels stiff. The buttons have a similar clicky feel to them which is super nice and these spinners are amazing too. I've not played too many games that actually utilise them but for the few that I have played I can't picture controlling them any other way now. It's so much more accurate to control the paddle in something like Super Breakout with these than a standard joystick and the spinners themselves are really smooth to the point where I just like to spin them around while I'm waiting for a game to load or watching a cutscene or something. It's like a built-in fidget spinner. The trackball has come in handy way more than I thought it would due to its compatibility with light gun games. While the cabinet is compatible with third party guns like the aim track light gun, I don't yet have any of these. So my experience with these shooter games has so far consisted of using the trackball to control a cursor on the screen to replicate where you're aiming the gun. Of course this is nowhere near as fun as using an actual gun but it's still a really good option to experience these games right out of the box without a need for any further purchases. The 24 inch LCD screen is crystal clear and every game I've played on this looks amazingly crisp and it's more than big enough for two players to take part in some multiplayer action. In fact, a neat little feature with the cabinet is that you can actually sync other wireless controllers to it to play with even more than two players. Or maybe this would come in handy if you're playing a game that's more suited to a traditional controller. One of the complaints I initially had about the cabinet is that the 300 preloaded games leave a lot to be desired. There's some absolute must have arcade classics which are completely absent here, like for example Pac-Man. Plus 150 of the games aren't actually arcade games at all but instead console games from the NES, SNES, Sega Mega Drive and Atari 2600. I personally find this quite strange because the whole reason you'd want an arcade cabinet is to play arcade games, not console games which you can easily emulate or access practically anywhere else. Plus, out of the 150 actual arcade titles on offer here, there's a bit of a lack of variety featuring hardly any fighting or racing games which initially made me a little bit worried about its longevity. 
However, this is where the cabinet's BYOG feature comes in, standing for Bring Your Own Games. This allows you to put your own, legally obtained games onto a USB stick, plug it straight into the arcade's front-facing control deck, and access a far wider selection of titles than what's being offered by default. There's even a digital store called the App Store X, where you can download a new front end for the arcade called CoinOps X, which is arguably a better interface for accessing games from your USB stick. By taking advantage of these features, you can deck out the arcade with tons more games and play them in a much more authentic way than ever before, thanks to the arcade's different control inputs. So providing that you're comfortable with tinkering around with game files and downloading several pieces of software to get everything formatted properly on your USB stick, this really does breathe new life into the arcade cabinet. This brings me on to my only real big complaint with the device, which is that it just isn't quite powerful enough to play games which feature 3D graphics. Certain games will load, but stutter to the point where it's unplayable, while others seem to literally not boot up at all. Which, to be fair, could be something that I've done wrong on my end, of course, but I suspect that there's not a lot that could be done about this without some kind of hardware upgrade. This basically means that the arcade is somewhat restricted to playing games from the early 90s or before. If you try to get into stuff like Tekken or Time Crisis, you're probably going to encounter issues. But if you're more of a fan of the sort of golden age of arcade games, stuff like Street Fighter 2, Bubble Bobble, Metal Slug, Outrun, and basically anything consistent of 2D graphics, then this arcade cabinet is absolutely perfect. There's a whole host of extra features offered by the device too. From your standard stuff like save states, a rewind function, and different visual options and filters to swap between. But then you also have online leaderboards for certain games, although you can only access those on your phone rather than the arcade itself, which is a bit weird. You have the option to stream games to your device via a paid service called ArcadeNet, which also allows you to take part in some online multiplayer on a selection of titles too. And something that you don't actually need to pay for is the ability to stream games directly from your own PC. This is a nice workaround for playing more demanding games on your arcade via your PC, but the mileage you get out of this will be very dependent on your internet connection. However, at least in theory, this would be an excellent way of playing those newer 3D arcade games on your device, even if it isn't doing it natively. I will say though, based on my experience with using in this, it's actually pretty awesome. My internet connection isn't the worst, but it's also not the best either, and I was able to fairly smoothly stream my PC to the cabinet. The main drawback here is that there was a tiny bit of input delay. However, this didn't outright ruin the gameplay, and I would say this is definitely an option for if you absolutely needed to play a more demanding game on your arcade machine. For example, one of the games I tried to play earlier on the arcade itself was Tekken, and it really struggled to get anywhere near a good enough frame rate to play properly. However, by emulating it on my PC and streaming it to the arcade, I could get way better frame rates and even still use the arcade controls too. Sure, it's not as good as playing the game natively, and sure, you need a reasonably powerful PC to actually be able to emulate the games you want to play in the first place, but it is a decent enough workaround if you already have access to this stuff, and plus it would also allow you to play any PC games on the arcade cabinet too, not just emulate stuff. I mean, hell, you could even just use this function to watch YouTube if you really wanted to. Another very interesting aspect of the Arcade Legends Ultimate is that it's almost been designed as a modular system. What I mean by this is that not only can you buy first-party upgraded components to customise the cabinet to your needs, like for example with the new CPU upgrade which fairly significantly boosts the power of the device, I would be extremely interested in testing this out for myself to see if it allows the cabinet to play some of those 3D titles I talked about earlier. Or you could get the Legends Quad Play Control Panel which adds four joysticks to the control panel, offering more authentic 4 
four player action. You can even get purely cosmetic upgrades, such as the Legends Bit LCD, which is an animated marquee to replace the standard one that comes with the cabinet, or you can get side panel art to replace the one printed onto the cabinet itself, with art focused on a particular game like Bubble Bobble or Space Invaders. I'm actually really interested in the bit LCD because it changes the marquee design to match whatever game you're playing, which I think would probably make it look even more impressive than it already does. Then on top of all of that, you've also got the option for third party upgrades. For example, you could set up the previously mentioned aim track light guns, or you could opt to get a riser for the arcade cabinet to make it even taller, which may make it more comfortable if you're a particularly tall person. The added benefit of this is that it would make the cabinet look even more imposing, which is what you kind of want from a device like this. Overall, I'm extremely impressed. This is my first home arcade cabinet, so I can't really compare it directly with any others on the market, but honestly, I don't see any real reason that I would ever want to upgrade from this one. As I previously mentioned, the only real downside here is the fact that it has limited power, which means that it can't really play any games that feature 3D graphics. However, there are workarounds for this, like streaming from your PC, or potentially this new CP you upgrade that's releasing soon. The fact that you can just turn this thing on and it boots straight up, you can go into any game and the controls are already mapped perfectly, and you even have the option of adding your own games to spice up the selection, along with the amazing offering of control schemes and the great visual and audio quality, make this one of the absolute best ways of playing these arcade games. If you want even more information about the Arcade Legends Ultimate, then check out our written review, which will be linked in the description below. Also, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like, and why not subscribe to see more stuff like this coming soon? Go on, I know you want to, give it a little click. For now, I've been Rob from Retro Dodo, and I'll see you in the next one.